Well, hey, everybody, thanks for coming uh, to this organized chaos session. Uh, it is going to be a little wild and you may, uh, my goal is to, is to um, go slow enough that you keep up with me, but you, um, you know, depending on your own situation, uh, you may have to refer back to a video and maybe you won't get everything done. And I will, ooh, there's a roasted pepper I'm seeing. Um, and so I'll try to, uh, you know, uh, be able to figure out where you all are and keep it all together. But, um, well, there is a video afterwards and we can uh, finish um, if you don't finish um, uh, while during class. So we have two recipes that John picked out. Uh, one is sweet potato gnocchi, which I actually think is better than regular gnocchi because it gives something more than just potato. It gives some fiber. And I, so I, and I, it's ter perfect for the season. And uh, it can also be made beforehand uh, for a fall dinner party. And then we've got some uh, dumplings that I have been making for years and caterings, really Christmas oriented, red and green. And so it's just a fun dish. They also can be made and froze beforehand. And so this is a good meal. There is, as you've noticed with the ingredients, there's some you know specifics about it um, and a lot of details. And so uh, we're just gonna begin, but, um, well, we'll we'll do the best we can with everything. So a couple things. Um, get out a baking sheet if you don't have one handy, and you, if you haven't toasted your cashews, or if you if you've got roasted cashews, great. And if you're going to have to roast them, then just put it on that baking sheet if you can, and kind of put it off the side. And then another thing is get a pot of water uh, on the back of your stove. So that's going to be for the gnocchi. And um, it doesn't have to be a large pot, this is kind of your, your, your average size uh, pot. In fact, during class, we'll probably only do a few of the gnocchis uh, because of time, and then you'll end up doing the rest later. So you can get those two things set up and just kind of have them ready. You can turn the boiling water on uh, right now so that we have it ready when we want it. At this point, Laura, sorry, it's just the cashews on the, the pan ready to go in the oven, not actually in the oven. Well, if you're more than, you know, people are in different spots. If your stuff is roasting, maybe some of you are still roasting a pepper or a sweet potato. Yeah. And, you know, we can, we can put these into the oven now. Um, the thing is, is if your oven's at 400 degrees for the roasting of a sweet potato or a pepper, which is a more appropriate temperature for those, I would turn it down a little bit to like 350 so that we don't, um, uh, 400's hot for cashews. And okay. we can put that in the oven. I think, why not? Let's do it. If you've got the space, um, you can do it. And again, if the cashews seem like it's a little too crazy, uh, that's for our sauce and maybe you'll finish the sauce after class if you don't finish. So 350 for that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, a couple of things. We're gonna take our raw shrimp. If you're choosing shrimp, we have two options. We have tofu or shrimp. Um, the Yuba tofu is good because it sticks together and it avoids needing any kind of uh, an egg. Uh, to hold it in the dumpling. And the, the shrimp actually has its own viscousness. So um, make sure it's thawed. Uh, if it's not thawed, you wanna soak it into some cold water. And if it is thawed, we just wanna pull off the, um, if you haven't done it already, pull off the little tails on the shrimp. How's everyone doing so far? I'm, I'm gonna thaw my shrimp here. Oh, okay, if your shrimp isn't thawed, yeah, then put it in some water and we'll, um, we'll let you do that and we'll kind of hold up on the shrimp then for a second. So whether you're using shrimp or tofu or both, we're gonna start off with making our spinach or with wilting our spinach. So I just have a regular a pan. Anything will do, a pot or a pan, it doesn't matter. I know everyone's got different cooking equipment. And remember, we have three cameras here, and the goal is, is not to see me as much as see what's the cutting board and the stove. So hopefully when you look up, you can see what's going on. And I've got four cups of spinach, approximately, and we're going to just measure that out, raw spinach, and, and put it into our pan, our dry pan, no oil, no anything, and turn that pan on. 
and wilt our spinach. So you want about a medium temperature. If you have a lid for that spinach pan, that's your best bet. Put cover the pan. If you don't have a lid, you want to pay attention and make sure your temperature is lower so that you can actually um, wilt the spinach without it burning. So for those of us with the tofu option, should we be doing any preparation there? Now with the you and now for folks who have Yuba tofu, um, this is going to work really well and I'll show you and maybe Ray can put this on the spotlight of the um, overhead shot. Yuba tofu is a product um, that's basically thin, thin strips, thin layers of tofu, very thin. And um, Hodosoy is a company in the East Bay, so um, uh, in, in San Francisco. And they put a little sauce on it and it makes it kind of sticky and I'm gonna open it up. Now, the reason why we use the Yuba tofu is again, it kind of has the same quality of the shrimp in that it will hold the, um, it will hold the um, dumpling together. So if you have- Did anyone find the- yeah, we're in yeah. Canada and it didn't seem to be an option up here. Ah, okay, okay. So do you have shrimp? Is anyone not, you know, is anyone just doing the tofu? Because the tofu might be, you certainly can if you want. Why don't you just, if you've got regular tofu, take about a quarter of that chunk and just um, crumble it up in your hands. And do we need any sauce with that? That looks a bit saucy. Should we add any oil in it and make it a bit sticky or... Yeah, you know, let's kind of crumble up a little bit in the pan and let's uh, let's take it one step at a time. Okay. And we'll see how that goes. And again, if you're shrimp, then you just can use the shrimp. Yeah, they're baking something. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. Are we working on the shrimp? What do we do with we're the working on the We're working on the dumplings first, yeah. Okay, okay. so we're doing spinach right now. Yeah. You want to help stir this? Yeah, I've got my heat on about medium heat, and I'm letting that um, spinach yeah. wilt. Stir it up. Honey, look what I'm doing. Any seasoning on the spinach? No, the spinach is dry in a dry pan, and with a little heat and a lid is best. You'll be able to um, just cook it, basically. As you see, it's kind of just basically, you know, you could. Another option is you could throw it into boiling water, but um, really a dry pan is the best. And then anybody who might be standing looking at me, oh, I see we have a youngster too. Make sure you've got out your oyster sauce, maybe some sriracha and a little bit of fresh ginger. Or fish sauce, right? Or fish sauce. Now I know there, who's the vegetarian in the crowd? Me. And yeah, that is Amber also. or Cassia? Rhett. Cassia. Okay, Cassia. So um, fish sauce or oyster sauce, or if you look on the camera on the over, on the overhead shot, um, I yeah, got nice. a vegan, uh, even soy-free fish sauce. Love it. So there's other things you can um, you can do. Awesome. Thank you. Now your spinach is probably good. Um, Not even close. Maybe turn off, if you've got a lid on it, you can turn off uh, the heat and then just let it steam up a little bit more. But your spinach is probably good and we're gonna let that just kind of cool down a touch. And ginger. With the ginger that we're prepping. For the ginger, should we be like mincing it up into little pieces? Or I guess you're about to do it. Okay. Yeah, so the ginger, um, you can pull off little ends and use them in different ways if you're struggling with um, uh, peeling it. You can also put that into a stock. And then, um, or you can simply uh, uh, peel around it. Because when you have this older ginger, which is what most ginger is that's sold in the store, the skin is too rough to eat. So we wanna peel that skin off. If you had young ginger, which is what they make sushi ginger out of, is young ginger, 
you um, and you can get that at Asian stores. Um, you can eat the whole thing. You don't have to peel off the skin. But for this older ginger, which is fine, we're going to peel off the skin and then we're going to grate ourselves. What is it? About a tablespoon of ginger. Ooh. Now I just have this handy dandy little um, uh, sill pad and I was like, it's such a great thing. And I just moved my, um, I just got a little cut. So everyone's gonna catch up while Laura gets a, 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 a Band-Aid on her hand. It gives an opportunity. So those sill pads are fantastic. And I'm gonna say it's Laura's favorite things um, so, oh, no, excuse me, not sill pads. The, um, the little microplanes are wonderful uh, for Christmas gifts. And during this whole class, I'll keep giving you the Laura's favorite things, which are all my favorite um, holiday gifts, because really Christmas or any kind of whatever celebration that you do, culinary gifts are, so, are such nice things to receive because they... Um, People use them. So this, if you, you, can, you can just use a regular grater to grate ginger, you can use a ginger grater. But I've got, again, this thing called a um, microplane. And it's a nice tool. They come in different kinds of sizes. They're great. They're great to grate things like chocolate. They're great for nutmeg. About a tablespoon. And that's gonna go into a bowl. And about a tablespoon of the oyster sauce, which is basically a thickened soy sauce. Or you can put a little bit of fish sauce in instead if you don't have oyster sauce. Can you put both? Sure. Okay. You can put a little sriracha or sambal alak is an, um, another hot sauce. Uh, everybody knows sriracha, I think. But if, um, if you've never tried sambal olek, uh, that is fantastic. And it's a great gift too for the holidays for anybody who likes hot. Now, if you're toasting your cashews, remember this is organized chaos and that's a kitchen. We do all kinds of things at the same time. I want you to look at your cashews. I'm gonna pop mine in for about a few more minutes. Oh, my yam's looking good. Yeah. Oops. So make sure you check those cashews out if they're roasting. And then we're going to get back to our, um, our spinach, which should be a little bit cooler now. And what we want to do with the spinach is to remove any excess moisture. So is it cool enough to handle? It's still a little hot. It's still a little hot on my end. Me too. And it's probably still a little hot on your end. So I'm gonna take it out of the pan and put it into a bowl. And I'll just let that cool down a little bit. We don't wanna, we don't wanna use it quite yet. What we'll do instead is go to our roasted red pepper, which hopefully you have done. And we're gonna peel off the skin from that roasted red pepper. So that just involves basically, you know, if it's coming straight out of the oven, which mine is actually already cool, a nice thing to do is to put your roasted red pepper in a bowl and then cover it up because the steam will help remove that skin. That's a good tip. Now my water on the, on the back of the burner is boiling, so I'm just turning off that water. Okay. So we're removing the skin of the roasted red pepper, is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're removing the skin of the roasted red pepper and the seeds. Okay. And then I'm just gonna transfer mine, keep the juice separate. You might, we might use the juice, we may not. The juice is delicious, actually. Try not to throw it away. You can put it into a um, salad dressing or you can deglaze a pan with it like you would stock or wine. I immediately regret slicing my red pepper into strips. 
Yeah, so remove that skin from the roasted red pepper. And then we can just chop that red pepper up. Okay, perfect. <laughs> And you just want to chop the red pepper up. It's going to be part of our sauce for the dumplings. And so I would say, you know, they don't have to all be the same size or anything, but then you want them kind of like quarter inch by quarter inch. Not really big, I would say big pieces, but. And then just keep that off to the side. And we removing the skin because it's bitter, I guess. Well, the skin has got that, it's not bitter, but it has, um, you know, when we chew on something, sometimes, oops, that's my cashews. I'm gonna take those guys out. The skin sometimes, like the strings of celery, can get caught up in our teeth, I quite see. honestly. So my cashews look good, and I'm just going to uh, put, leave them back on the back side of the stove to cool. Sorry, I, I'm the peppers are just in little like pieces. Yeah, little pieces. Yeah, I just about quarter inch by quarter inch squares. Okay, okay, thank you. And then you can throw that into a um, a bigger bowl, and we'll start making our our sauce. Now I have on the recipe. I have winter options, summer option for sauces. And um, the nice thing about this dinner is that, or you can actually adjust, say, for the tomatoes, which we'll dice next. Um, and if you, want, if you don't want to use tomatoes, especially in British Columbia in the winter, um, you can use a winter squash and still have a nice result. The tomatoes is the one prep item that's 100% complete for me. Me too. Oh, wow. Did you chop your pepper? Did you chop them up? I have not chopped the pepper yet. Still catching up there. Oh, but you're cho you chopped the tomato. I think the tomato, the tomato was prep. on our prep list, was it not? It, it was. Wasn't on the pre no, it wasn't it on the prep list, but good for you to chop it. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off the top little knobby. And Check then I'm going to get the... Um, uh, I'm going to take out the seeds with my finger. And then we're going to chop that tomato up. So about two tomatoes, you know, two tomatoes says I got three kind of smaller ones here. And I'm just putting my finger into the seeds. Now they say the seeds are bitter. And I don't really think that's necessarily the case, but sometimes seeds also can be distracting to the finished look. I think that's your bowl of just compost. Yes. Oh, this is my bowl of compost right okay. here. Yeah. yeah. So just what I'm doing that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking the seeds out of my pepper. Um, and the roasted red peppers just in a separate bowl on the side. Big bowl. Yeah, the roasted red big peppers bowl. on a big bowl. Big bowl. Is it with the ginger and the other stuff we did? No. no, no, the ginger. Keep that ginger off to the side now. So I've got the roasted red pepper. Side. And I'm going to now, I'm going to dice in my uh, tomato and add it to the roasted red pepper. I could add to shrimp. We've moved no. from the shrimp and. Red seeds if you did you just slice your roasted red pepper? Yeah. Uh, we slice it into small little spaces like we have right. um, or make small sure little folks let's make sure we're listening <laughs> right 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 so this you know it does it again this is a little more organized cast because everybody's mic is open so just fyi to the side conversations i'll try to stay quiet but i'll also um uh talk over with you if I need to. Okay. We've got time. So we're just dicing this tomato. We have two tomatoes, one large or two medium or three small like I have. Kind of the same size as the roasted red pepper. 
And that will put into the bowl with the roasted rubber. So we waited, we moved from the, doing the shrimp and tofu over to the dumpling sauce. One, because someone's still defrosting their shrimp, but they might have to, that person, we might have to catch up with you. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, and also because our spinach was hot and those two go together. So I have a bowl of tomato and roasted red pepper. And now to that, I'm gonna add the rest of the um, sauce ingredients. And I have a little bit of green onion. So green onion scallion. If it's thick and often these green onions these days are, it's unfortunate. I'll take my knife and cut down the center of it. And you can use the whites and the uh, greens, certainly in this recipe. And we want about a tablespoon. So it probably even won't be a whole piece of green so, onion, de depending oh, on the size. Can I sub, can I sub shallot for green onion? You, you could, yeah. Now it's gonna be stronger, but shallot has a floral flavor. I wouldn't put, I mean, you could put regular onion if you want, or you could leave it out too. I, I brought, for some reason, I bought shallot instead of green onion. No, no worries. So, you know, cooking is all about exchange. <laughs> if I have time, I'll tell you what, I just had a class from 11 to 12. And I'll tell you what happened in that class. You gotta, we gotta think on your feet. And you know, the most important thing besides having fun is just kind of be organized and keep, keep calm and carry on really. Don't let, never let them see you sweat. So I've got some basil. <laughs> I've got some fresh basil leaves, about two tablespoons I'm going to mince up. It's a nice addition to a Christmas holiday meal. If you don't have basil, don't worry, you don't need it. If you had another herb, like a leafy herb, I mean, cilantro would change the flavor and stronger. You could use it or you could always use parsley. How much basil again? About two tablespoons. Okay. Uh -huh. And that's gonna go in the... the and the green onions are going with the tomato red pepper. Tomato red pepper, right? We're just following the recipe down now. If anyone's waiting, the next things we're gonna get is the coconut milk. So you can open up your can of coconut milk. Um, if you have a bottle of wine open, we might add some wine to the sauce, but if you don't, you can just use more coconut milk. And then we're going to use some fish sauce or oyster sauce and some cumin. We're going to add that all into the same pot. So I'm, we're going to do a half a cup of coconut milk. And you can use, uh, usually when it says coconut milk, I'll take a little bit of the fat and a little bit of the liquid, whoops, and spill the rest on my cutting board. And then I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of wine. Now, if you don't have wine open or don't wanna use wine, just use, Oh, I splurged on the wine, company's buying, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, company's buying. Jokes, jokes. I might have. Yeah, done so I'm, <laughs> I'm using a rose wine at about. Rose all day. Rose, rose all day. day. Rose all day. One, two, three. And Abby about and I here have a nice uh, Sauvignon Blanc here we're going to rock with. Ooh. Ooh. Really? From the valley, local there. <laughs> yep. I want to hear how Amber's assembly line is going. Plastic bottle. A little bit for the one. dish, a little bit for the cook, a little bit for the dish, a little bit for the cook. One-to-one -one ratio, right? <laughs> Make My sure if anyone's line is not going great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> you can do Here it, Amber. Everyone. You got this, Amber. We're all struggling along. You should see my kitchen. It's a mayhem. 
Oh, oh my God, you should see mine. Yeah. Thank you. If anybody still has cashews in the oven, make sure you take them out. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, so coconut milk, wine, and how much cumin? Uh, cumin, about a tablespoon of cumin. Okay. About a pinch of turmeric, if you have it, and makes it a nice color. If you don't have it, don't worry. I'm looking for my turmeric. I know I prepped it. Cumin, there it is. Turmeric. Turmeric? I oh, don't know, a little curry. I'm going to use curry instead. So about a pinch of turmeric. And then a little pinch of sambal or olak or something hot. Or not. If you don't like hot, don't add it. A little pinch. And then a little pinch of sugar. Or not. Right? These are just kind of... When we're seasoning things, if we can create sour, salty, and sweet in the same dish, that's what our junk food is made of. That's what we get addicted to. So if you can put a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour, a little bit of salt, oh my God, you got your guests under your thumb. Can you so put can you the... Sorry, What's I want to ask about the, uh, the peppers. So the peppers, I looked them up and they're just kind of normal peppers, couldn't find them. And then the person just suggested a substitute for chili peppers, but I have the, the fresh produce peppers. Were we supposed to get like dried the, for the roasted red pepper? No, I'm meaning for the the hot pepper. Oh, well, hot pepper it could be you know basically we're adding a little. It could be cayenne pepper, like powdered. It could be sambal olek, um, which is um, uh, kind of a got a little whole chili flakes in it. It could be uh, sriracha, which is a uh, pepper paste. Got um, it. Anything or not, right? And then mix got that it. sauce up together. And we'll just put it on the side. That's our sauce. Cumin, turmeric, some wine, something hot. Coconut milk. Coconut milk. Mm -hmm. A little sugar. Was there salt in here? No. Yeah, a little salt. Fish sauce or um, oyster sauce. Cool. Basil, green onion. Basil, green onion. Mm-hmm. It's very unique recipe, actually. Really, it's really fun. You'll will love it. Okay, so um, I've got my spinach. It's cool now, and what I want to do is squeeze out any moisture that might be in there. So you can take the whole thing and just kind of squeeze it out. And you'll notice. I don't know if we can see it, but you can see the. Well, it's kind of hard to. Here we go. How about something like this? You get a lot of moisture out of it. So we want to get the moisture out of it. <laughs> now, how burnt is too burnt for the cashews? Should I start? <laughs> what, what'd you say? How burnt is too burnt for the cashews? <laughs> Well, I would say just put it off to the side and we'll talk about that when we get to that sauce. Okay. Please Don't worry okay. about it. Yeah, if you can taste it and you and you like the taste, then that's fine. Okay. Now for the spinach, I'm just going to put my knife on it just a little bit, kind of cut that up a touch. Great. So and I'm going to take, I'm going to take my shrimp and put it into, uh, I'm going to put it into a Cuisinart. Now, if you don't have a Cuisinart, you can just chop it up fine. Um, so you can always, a Cuisinart just makes your life easier. And um, there's a lot of things you can use uh, for a Cuisinart. Um, what I like to do with the shrimp, though, before I put it into a Cuisinart, is kind of cut it into smaller pieces because that will give it the ability to um, blend better. And that's usually the case for anything in a Cuisinart except for like a you know, pureed soup. If you really want to be effective uh, with your um, 
Cuisinart, the best thing to do is just let it um, cut, cut your things a little bit before you put them in it, because that will help with the way that it um, blends. Now, if you're just using the tofu and you have regular tofu, I would crumble it. I'm not sure what's going to happen with the regular tofu, but I actually do have something that might, well, you won't have it, but I, I can try with it. So I'm just cutting my, my shrimp. And I'll put that in. And then to that, I'm going to also add in a little, like a, about a tablespoon of green onions. And I don't have to dice them too small. I'm going to put them in with the shrimp. and whirl those guys up together. With the tofu, um, I'm going to add a little bit of chopped green onions, so smaller, um, sliced thin into my tofu, my yuba tofu. Yuba tofu, you can buy it online. Um, again, it's, um, it's like a thin coating of tofu. It's a very interesting. I, I, I'll show you if you look up, you can see the overhead shot. It's really thin and it does have some um, oil in it. So if you have your tofu, just drizzle on, like someone suggested earlier, a little bit of oil, not a lot, a little bit to give it a, a viscousness. Put a little salt if it's plain tofu and then add in your green onions. So to the shrimp, you just put green onions and the shrimp. Yeah, and then we're gonna turn, I'm gonna whirl that um, up. So we wanna make a paste. So the thing about the, the shrimp is when, it, um, when it's cooked, it will congeal and that's what keeps the dumpling together. Okay. So I just wanna pulse my Cuisinart. I don't really want to give it, uh, I don't want it into like a, a sauce. I kind of want it chopped, okay. but not too, not too saucy. Listening I mean, not saucy. Now, everybody, you can look up and you can see what the shrimp looks like with the green onions. And I'm going to transfer that. Uh, I did. I think someone said we put in green onions. Yeah, put in a, about a tablespoon or two of green onions into your shrimp. Transfer that to a bowl. John, it looks like your helper is doing more work than you. <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. <laughs> now, the nice thing about my little kitchen is everything is so close. You might have a kitchen where you have to walk farther to your to your sink. And what I have on the cutting board is I've got a bowl with shrimp and green onions okay. and a bowl of tofu and green onions. So I'm going to put my, um, my spinach. I'm going to put half and half spinach. I'm going to put half of my spinach in my tofu and half of my spinach in my um, shrimp. But, you know, if you've got all shrimp, then you put it all in your shrimp. If you want to try a few tofu, just make a you know, then kind of split it half and half. And to those same two bowls, I'm gonna go back to my grated ginger and I'm gonna split my ginger up between those two bowls. So half in the shrimp and half in the tofu. Laura, is this still all pre Cuisinart or are you already kind of blended some stuff? Oh, I blended the shrimp and the Cuisinart with the green onions. So again, Great. if you didn't see that, you can yeah, see the okay. texture of the shrimp now. All right, I'm catching up to that. I'm do that now. Okay, good. And then we're going to add our ginger, about a tablespoon of minced ginger into either one bowl or split it between two. And then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of fish sauce or oyster sauce or 
What do I have here, actually? Yeah. I had some garlic black bean sauce. I'm going to use this up instead. I didn't have any oyster sauce in my house. Again, it's thickened soy sauce. So oyster sauce, black bean sauce, it all kind of looks, it's just like thick and they actually use cornstarch to thicken the sauce. And then a little bit of hot if you want. So sriracha, again, a little bit of cayenne pepper. And then you just want to mix it up with your hands. Anyone else sweating? You guys, you guys, you guys hot? Mix it up with your hands. Now I want everybody to catch up to the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can and... I ask a question? So we had sure. like the ginger we did initially. Is that the ginger that we're putting in here or that's separate from the ginger? Yep, part? that's, that's you put that split. Split half of it in, if you're doing tofu and shrimp, which is um, ambitious, but split it half and half. And if you're, you know, doing one, then split, put the whole thing in. And give yourself a pat on the back if you're almost there. And um, we're going to let everybody catch up to that so that they have their bowls of both of those um, fillings. Now, if you're done and you're ready to move on, you can start peeling your sweet potato if you haven't done it yet. Do you mind so if we just do a refresh of uh, every, all the ingredients that are going into the prawn slash tofu? There's like the sure. green onions, the sriracha, the fish sauce, or, or oyster sauce, yeah. the ginger, yeah. and okay. uh, maybe, a, yeah, and that's it. Oh, and the okay. spinach. And the spinach, thank you. And the spinach. So you're gonna end up with a bowl of shrimp and or a bowl of tofu with those ingredients in it. And while you're waiting for everybody else to catch, while everyone finishes with that, I'm just peeling my sweet potatoes. Oops, putting them in the wrong thing. And this can be done, you know, these aren't technically sweet potatoes. I don't know if this is like this in Canada, but these are actually yams, yams. Japanese yams. Yeah. And the sweet potatoes are, are white. But in this country, I, don't, I hope I, I might have even wrote that on the recipe. Like, you know, what's, what's cool about using the actual yams is that they, um, the color is so beautiful. Um, but most people call this, these orange yams in the United States sweet potatoes. And that's just, I don't know why, who knows why we've done that. You can use either and you can use potato, of course. But again, the thing that the sweet potato gives you besides eat the rainbow, right? So we get color, which means we're getting antioxidants that we don't get from regular potatoes. Is we get more fiber and it's a better texture, I think. And so my sweet potatoes, I've just got there. Can you show us your shrimp filling? Sure. Please. Yeah, so my shrimp bowl, I'll put both of them. This is my shrimp. Okay. Smells good. This is my tofu. And if um, you're ready to move on, I or, or we're going to move on. We are going to move on a little bit. We're going to get out our wonton skins. And what we're gonna do is we're only gonna make a few of each of these. So you're gonna have leftover filling and you'll finish that when we finish class, but because we only have so much time, we're only gonna make a few. Now I'm gonna take a baking sheet and I'm gonna sprinkle a little cornstarch on it. Um, that prevents things from sticking. If you had a ton of these, you know, it would take you probably a good 20 minutes to make them all. So it's a good way to um, <clears throat> Laura, to hold what were you just sprinkling there? I corn sprinkled starch. a little bit of um, cornstarch on it. And that just keeps things from sticking because again, we're only gonna make a few. Um, and if you have a smaller baking sheet, it might even be better because we're gonna <laughs> hold on 
to these till the end of class. We're just gonna make probably two of each, maybe three. And, and then if we had extra time, we could do more at the end of class. So I'm gonna- Laura, is there a possible substitute for cornstarch? Well, you could use a piece of parchment paper parchment. or you could use a silp hat, which is permanent parchment. You could even use just regular flour. Got one of those. Perfect. With the cornstarch though, you're going to get the added aspect of crisp ah. and crisp is always nice. Crisp is nice. I've got my wonton skins here. It doesn't matter what size they are. You can cut to your preference. Usually what's sold around here in the regular stores and the, in the Asian stores, you can get them all sizes, all shapes. But around my grocery stores, the usual size is the squares, which you could use. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them into a circle because I like that shape better. I think it uses the wonton skin better. So if you look up, you'll see me cutting a square wonton into a circle. And that and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. But it keeps for me those added that added skin off to the it keeps it out of the way and it just it just um cooks better, I think. Okay, so you may want to look up now uh, wherever you are, because I'm going to just show you how we're going to stuff this. And I've got my, my wonton square here. I'm going to make a hole in my finger and kind of put, tuck that in a little bit, and then take my shrimp and put it in that hole. And then keep a towel handy so that my other hand isn't full of shrimp. When I put this guy down on my cutting board and kind of flatten it out on the bottom and make any kind of shape I want. But for this, I make kind of like a little triangle and then I'll put that on my cornstarch. So again, you can do it any way you want. But what I usually do is like, I, I make myself a hole by make, tucking it into my thumb and then putting about a tablespoon of your filling and then just kind of squeezing that around it so that it sticks together. Now with the tofu, I'm gonna to do the same thing, about a tablespoon. The tofu is a little different. If you've got the regular tofu, it may, you know, you may be able to squeeze it, but here you're going to yeah, want to kind of get it moist like a little bit. If you add too much filling, it's going to be too big. And with the tofu, you, once you start making the, um, the, to if, the if wonton skin a little moist, then, then it will stick together. Wonton skin a little moist, just with some water? Well, you know, with, um, we either make your fingers moist or okay. squish, the, squish, squish the tofu in so that it makes it moist. Okay. A little bit of water would be good too. Yeah, I'll take a little water. I've never done that can... before, this is so fun. This is fun. They okay, look yummy. So I'm, I'm only going to do <laughs> one more of each because we're almost at the half hour mark and we want to move on to the gnocchi. <laughs> so if you have your filling, you, you know, be good if you can make at least one dumpling. And if you, but don't make, you know, we're going to, we're going to move on. So don't, okay. we're not going to make the whole thing. You're going to have to finish at the end of class because we don't have the time to make all of them. But this is a great thing, you know, if you have guests over, people want to help, right? Everything is DIY now. We don't need our help because all we need is big them. Yeah, we got li the little one in there might want to be making this too. These are just fun things to make. Put it in the middle of your hand like this. No, I put... I 
Hmm? Hey, Ray, can you give me the gallery shot of everybody? Is that something you can do for me? Probably not. I'm going to go over there. I want to see what everyone's doing. I can show you. I'll move my, ca my camera. Oh, no, I, I can see y'all now. My wonton skills are not that amazing, but um, we will roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Moist, moisten Start your off. fingers if you're not getting, uh, you know, if you're not getting sticky. I'm good. Okay, so another life. Check mine out. Let every... Ow! We're gonna let everybody catch up. Make <laughs> about be. make about three or four be. wontons, no more. <laughs> And then um, you will cover them with something and just put them in the refrigerator for the time being. Laura, is it safe to assume that the uh, there'll be kind of a continuation or homework after this class? Well, you'll finish make using your filling to make the rest of your dumplings. And if you, um, you know, the thing about this is you can make dumplings to this point and then freeze them without cooking them. No way. Freeze them, and then you can reheat them at when the time of your party. Love it. I love this. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Dumplings are fun. You can, you know, look online. There's so many shapes. I don't want to introduce new shapes or anything to you right now, but there's a lot of things. You know, you can close them. You can do all kinds of fun things with them. People love using them, and um, yeah. The dumpling struggle is real over here. Let's try another <laughs> wrapper. That would be big six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've definitely exceeded the limit. I made six. I also uh -huh. made oh, six jealous. Plus. Oh, good. Okay, so now that people are, what I'm going to do, um, I, I might take um, some beeswax wrap, which is a great gift for the holidays but all mine is covered into other things. I could cut myself a new piece, but as far as Laura's favorite things go, bees wax, wax wrap, if you can say that five times fast, is um, a great way to get rid of plastic wrap. And um, it's a fun gift. So consider that to be a Christmas holiday gift, whatever celebration you celebrate. Hey, Laura. Oh, or I'm, hold on, or I'm just gonna use a plastic bag that I have and just kind of cover these up and put them in the fridge. Yes. And I uh, check. I just want to check in on Amber and see if Amber, if you want, <laughs> how you're doing, if you want any uh, any other tips or anything, or you're happy with where you are. Um, I'm fine with like my dumpling mix, but I'm confused with the sauce. Like, I think I have everything for like the summer sauce rather than the winter oh. one, and I don't know what to do with it. Um, are the basically uh you want to add all the sauce ingredients together so that's the, the red pepper that's the um tomato and that is uh the coconut milk and a little bit of wine oyster sauce cumin yeah okay. and you know what i'm gonna let everybody finish and then we're gonna move on to our gnocchi so I have to go get another Band-Aid because <laughs> oh, that one didn't work. With the dumplings, they're open, right? They're not like... They are, they're open. Mine, the way that I made them, they were open. But if you okay. close them, that's not a problem either. Close so mine. the nice thing about the dumplings is you can make them into all kinds of shapes. And if you're one of those people who just likes different kind of shapes, go online. Let's oh, see, we got eight. about 15 here. Okay, Holy well, yeah, smokes. stop making the dumplings. If you have six or four, that's it. Stop making it because now we're moving on okay, to we're done. the gnocchi. We're done. So you want to cover those dumplings up wherever you are, put a little bit of plastic on top of them and put them in the refrigerator. Now we're gonna move on to the gnocchi. And what I wanna say about the gnocchi is, the best thing you can do with the sweet potato is to push it through something called a ricer. If you look up on C and Ray, maybe you can highlight the overhead shot. 
A potato ricer is what you use to make mashed potatoes. It's also a nice culinary gift and it's kind of a unique one that you won't find. If you don't have that, then I would take a knife and kind of chop your sweet potatoes up a little bit more fine because you're going to have um, those fibers we were talking about to um, break down. So you'll see as I push through the ricer, it makes, it, it smashes that sweet potato up. And if you don't have it, again, just give a little, give a little, chop them up a little bit. But this is the effective way to break those fibers up quickly. I'm not one for a lot of culinary, extra culinary tools. I have a small kitchen. I don't have the space for them. But this tool is, is unique. Um, the closest she would get would be pushing something through a sieve or something. So even in a 400 square foot um, house, which I live in, I find that I have space for a potato, what they call ricer. And it doesn't have to be, some of it's gonna go through, some of it won't ever go through and just kind of give it a little squish. And if you don't have the ricer, again, you wanna just give, a, give your sweet potatoes a little. Laura, put them on the cut I'm um, squishing the sweet potato in my hand. Yeah, well, that's fine. Okay. We'll see what we get. Cause it's all okay. a matter of how well the, um, you know, the flour melds with the um, sweet potato so that it holds together okay. into something that, um, into something that uh, will, will, will hold and, uh, you know, be able to be boiled and hold. Okay, so, so people got, seem, go ahead. I ordered sweet potato and they gave me sweet potato, not yams. So the white. The white ones, yeah. Well, that's fine. Again, you know, similar in texture. Oh um, what you will have is um, you won't have the color. I have the color. And, you know, what's so pretty about these things is the color. Right, because it's, it's orange and white or whatever. Yeah. Right, so you're squeezing your potatoes, sweet potatoes, you're getting that in a bowl. You want to get about a cup of flour measured out. Um, white flour. I was going to put some buckwheat flour into mine, but um, I think I'm going to, I, I didn't grind it. So I'm going to, because, you know, this is the kind of recipe you can add in different kinds of flour. So today I'm just going to use some white flour. So get that, get that, uh, get a bowl with about a cup of flour in it. Actually, I'm going to put my flour into a big bowl and I've got my sweet potato on the side. Now I'm going to measure about a teaspoon of salt into my flour. And I'm going to grate up a little bit of nutmeg into it. And I'm going to use that tool I had mentioned earlier. That's a fun Christmas holiday gift. Excuse me if I keep saying Christmas and if everyone celebrates something different, but this, um, I've got this uh, microplane, they call it. And that's a nice gift to give people and it's a useful tool. And again, what do we do? We did ginger on it earlier and now I'm gonna do some nutmeg if I can hold on to it. And if you're a little bit behind, you can, you can avoid the nutmeg. If you've got ground nutmeg, you can certainly use ground nutmeg, but in spices in general, we're really, our best bet is to where we can use fresh spices. I feel like I'm the yoga instructor in the background with the soothing voice. You are. So I'm going, I'm going to turn back. Uh, I have that pot of boiling water and I turned it off. I'm just gonna turn it back on low 
to kind of get me ready for that. How much nutmeg again? Oh, about a half teaspoon. Okay. A little bit of nutmeg. I see a couple people ready to move on and a couple people moving. So we're going to let everybody catch so up. Good. What smells good? Nutmeg. Everything. Isn't it? Nutmeg is such an interesting spice. Um, you know, a lot of these spices, who, what, do, what do they even taste like? How do you describe the taste of nutmeg? If you ever have a spice that you want to maybe start playing with and you don't know how to use it, like say for instance, sumac, mm. the best thing you can do is, is mix it into something that doesn't have much flavor, but has consistency. So that's like mashed potatoes, mix it into some mashed potatoes or smashed potatoes, mix it into some cream cheese, and then taste that spice along with that thing. And then you can get a better understanding mm. to use spices yeah. you may not use. Okay, so we're gonna move on because it looks like people are looking at me. I have a bowl um, and I'll take the overhead shot, Ray. I have a bowl of flour, it's about a, a cup and I probably won't use all of it. So I'm gonna make a well so that I can easily take some out with my hand because we want the right amount of flour, but not too much. In the center of that bowl, I'm going to put my sweet potatoes. And I'm going to, I don't want to knead, this is not bread dough. We don't want to, do not knead the dough. Do not bruise the sweet potatoes. We want to just start folding in some of the flour and leave some of the flour out on the side. So you may see that I'm starting to pull the flour in, but I'm not pulling all of it in because I don't know how much I'm going to knead. And quickly, I'm gonna start feeling, if it starts feeling like it's not that sticky, I may remove some of my flour like I'm doing right now out of the bowl, just to a bowl on the side so that I have it if I want it. But I don't have too much flour. So I probably took out three tablespoons of flour from mine. I'm gonna actually probably take out about a quarter of a cup and it really depends on how moist your sweet potatoes are. Sometimes people, you know, make them, sometimes they're very juicy, sometimes they're not. And with my fingers, I'm like pushing down while I'm incorporating the flour, but I'm, not, I'm doing it with loving care. Loving I'm care. doing it with soft voice. soft voice. I'm not smashing it. No smashing. Oh, didn't that sound, that sounded like, uh, I just saw for the first time in 30 years, um, what's the way, The Exorcist, Reagan. I just, that's very amazing. I hadn't seen that movie in 30 years. I watched it on Halloween. So again, from that sweet potatoes, I probably took out about a quarter cup of flour and I'm just mashing it into the dough. Did you letting, put all, did you put all of your sweet potato in? I put all of the sweet potato in. Okay. Interesting. I had some left over a bit. It was so much. We did take this. We took the skin off, right? Yeah. We took the skin off. And then what I'm going to do with that extra flour is I'm going to put it down on my cutting board. And I'm going to transfer my kind of mixed dough, but not quite all the way onto that cutting board. I'm, I'm going to... So again, you'll kind of learn the feel of the dough and it's hard for me to describe it, but it's moist and it, it's, it holds together, but it's not too stiff. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour here. So what can I say? What's the texture like? Is it like my ear? It might be like my earlobe. Right. As far as texture goes, I, I, it's, you know, I've got, a, I've got, uh, and I want to make sure that it gets into the center, but I want to do it with soft voice and light touch. I'm going to rinse my hands off. It sh should it be sticking together? <laughs> It should, if you look and Ray, Ray gives us the overhead shot, 
it should be sticking together. It should be, again, kind of the texture maybe of my earlobe, a little bit softer than my earlobe, not quite earlobe. And then we're gonna test it. We're gonna, te we're gonna split our dough up into maybe four pieces. And three of the pieces you can just put off to the side because you'll finish those on your own time. And with one of the pieces, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put flour on my board and I'm gonna start rolling my piece of dough in that flour and start making a rope. And again, this is with soft touch. Soft touch. Soft Divide it into, Laura? Yeah, I would divide it into four pieces and put three of them off to the side that you'll complete after class. And you wanna get one, um, one piece that we're moving into. Now, as you roll this dough, you should start be able to get a rope. And if you find that your dough is falling apart, then you wanna put more flour down on the board um, so that you, have, you can actually make a rope. If you can't make a rope, you don't have enough flour in your dough. You don't really have to worry about it looking white at the end of the process because when you put it in the water, it'll, it'll pretty up. And you can roll this to as thick or as thin as you want. Often they say about it, you know, three quarters of an inch across, you know, make like one inch squares. I'm gonna show you my rope. And make sure you've got your water boiling or, or, or at least simmering in the background. Now, most likely we're gonna finish up with our, with our um, we're gonna cook our dumplings up and we're gonna cook our gnocchi and we're gonna put a little brown butter sauce on it. I'm not sure at this pace if we can make uh, uh, the cashew sauce. It's very quick and easy um, and we might be able to make it, but if not, you can, at least we'll have some brown butter sauce and then people can finish up with their, um, with the cashew sauce on their own time. What I'm going to do for get to in prep for my cashew sauce is just clean my Cuisinart. You guys, I lost a nail. Good thing I found uh -oh. it. Uh -oh. Okay, I got flour all over my shirt and my floor. Well, well, that's true. Don't look at my floor. I got a camera on the floor there it looks pretty looks pretty wild you want to get that rope together um, and then what we want to do is get a um, two saute pans I would say well one for our sauce and then and then one for the well if you have two saute pans one non-stick and one not non-stick, then that's fine. You can get those guys ready too on the stove. I think it's happening. Oh my gosh. Ooh, some people are even standing there. Yeah. So if you've got your rope and it's staying together, then you can yeah. just cut that gnocchi up into whatever size you want. This is where you can pick. I'm doing about one inch squares for my gnocchi. Cool. Now at this stage, once you cut the once you cut the gnocchi, you can leave it on a uh, lay it on a flat pan, um, and pop that into the freezer, freeze them, and then put that in store it in some kind of a you know freezer bag, and then when you're ready to use it, 
um, you just pop it into the boiling water, right? So you can make the gnocchi before hand, you know, make it on the week, uh, weekday. And when the weekend comes, you've already got it done. If you wanted to freeze it, not cooked, just like this. But we're gonna cook it now is what we're going to do. And if you're ready, I would test one of my gnocchis. Now the gnocchis take about four minutes in a sense to cook. I'm gonna put the boiling water under the camera. We wanna test it first because we still have the majority of our dough that um, we can add more flour to it for any reason it's not working and we need to thicken it up. And then we want to um, put some um, salt in that water and it's more than you would expect. It's, you know, it's, you want the water to be salty. So the best thing would be to do is taste it and see if you can taste the salt or, you know, I'm gonna put it in about a tablespoon of salt so that that actually works for my gnocchi. The other thing I'm going to do on one of my small pans is put some butter and it can, you don't have to measure it, but it could be about, you know, four tablespoons, five tablespoons, and just kind of get that ready and prepped. And then the other thing, a tool that is very good to use with Noki is some kind of a strainer that has the ability to be able to, um, move quickly, like some of the strainers that are really large, that are more, have more of a bulbous, you know, that that's harder to manipulate. Something flat, a flat strainer is a nice thing. If you have it, and if, and if all you have is a bulbous one, then you use that. Hey, Laura, just so you know, we, I only got the stuff for the cashew sauce. So I might just be, I'll just be watching until you're ready for that part. Well, exactly. And you know what? I mean, I, well, I want to, I want people to, the cashew sauce is very easy. Everything goes in the Cuisinart. So maybe what I'll do while you guys are kind of catching up is I'm going to start putting stuff in my Cuisinart. All the ingredients just go in there. And probably for an effective amount, I'm going to do half the sauce. So I'm going to put in half of my roasted cashews just to make it a little bit more effective. So at least I've got the sauce, that sauce done. Yeah, I'm going to put them all in. Yeah, we've got time. Okay, all the cashews are going in. All the cashews and then the, the cilantro, the bunch of cilantro goes in. The uh, uh, serrano pepper goes in. Instead of a cashew sauce, you can just do brown butter, right? You can do brown butter and the brown butter sauce will make two very quick and easy. Okay. With the cilantro, I've got a bunch here and I'm gonna, so you can obviously eat the stems. In fact, in cilantro, the stems have more flavor. That's what the, um, the Hispanic cilantro that you get at the farmer's market. The stuff you buy, the gringo stuff you buy in the grocery store, I'll get rid of the bottom and just kind of cut it all off. And then um, kind of like we sorry, were doing- I just wanted to clarify, were we supposed to have already put the gnocchi in the boiling water or no? Well, I haven't done that yet. So if we're ready, let's do that. Take one gnocchi, one gnocchi. and put it into a simmering pot of water. You don't want it really boiling hard because it might blow it apart. And what we're wa waiting for, looking for, is that gnocchi to rise to the top. And once it rises, then we wanna cook it for about a minute more usually. And it really depends on how large your gnocchi is. So we do, we're kind of testing it like you do popcorn, right? You put a couple kernels in and you see when they're pop and then you add the rest of it. At least I think that's what we used to do as a kid. And I don't even know why we did it that way now that I'm thinking about it. But um, the water shouldn't be too, you know, it should be boiling, it should be a low boil. The low boil. Yeah, low boil. Mine looks. We're basically Italian. We're awesome. You, you, who's Italian? 
We are, because we're making gnocchi. Gnocchi, we're making gnocchi. I should have my Italian ready to go, the Italian. Uh, uh, manja, manja, that's what manja, I want to say. Yeah, manja, manja. <laughs> yeah, what else goes in this? Uh, so now I'm doing a couple things at once. I've got a little, who, somebody had a shallot. We were going to put shallot in on our, on our um, cashew sauce too. So I'm going to put some of that in. Some garlic. Yes. The garlic and the shallot, if you're making again, so if you're whirling something up in a, in a Cuisinart, your best bet is to chop it a little bit, no matter what it is, because it will have to blend better. And the trick, of course, is mix your solids first. So for the cashew sauce, we're going to add a little bit of um, vinegar, and then we're going to add a little bit of oil. But I want to mix my dry ingredients first so I'm more effective in the blend. So when it rises to the top, just a minute more. Oh, yeah. OK, so mine is rising to the top. Very good. Same or on the same exact schedule. And I'm going to let it go for about a minute more. And then, um, actually, I can start adding any of my other ones in now because I know for my dough that it worked. Now, the thing about adding gnocchi in now is you don't want to add in a ton. I'm going to add in probably 10 pieces or because it will all start coming together in the center. I don't know why. Or, well, they, you know, they, they attract each other. So once you add in about 10 pieces or so, depending on how big your pot is, just make sure they're split up a little bit so that the water will touch all of them. Try to separate them is what I'm saying. So that'll be good. And I'm going to add my oil, my olive oil, good olive oil, not olive oil that I would saute with, olive oil that I wouldn't saute with, that I got at the farmer's market, better quality, more expensive for something like the cashew sauce, because I'm not cooking it. So I'm not cooking, I'm not wasting my, um, my, you know, my, uh, my money basically on, um, on some, on, on good olive oil that I cook with, you're just cooking your flavor out. So to that, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of olive oil and about two tablespoons of vinegar, brown rice vinegar. Oh, I don't have any brown rice vinegar, ah, that's funny. So what do I got instead? I got some champagne vinegar. Oh, I got some golden balsamic. What do I got? What's the difference between brown rice vinegar and the white rice vinegar? Well, sometimes the brown rice vinegar is not sweetened. And so it kind of depends on ah. how, where you fall on the whole sugar thing. I see. So yeah, I'm sporting a couple things right now. I've got my gnocchi cooking. And I'm going to start removing at least that old one. I've got my cashew sauce here that I'm I blended up. And depending on what you want, you may add a little bit of water to it to make it more viscous. And of course, taste it first. You may want to add more vinegar before you add more oil. I mean, more before you add water. And now what I'm going to do is start heating up a nonstick skillet. So one in the back here as my gnocchi is pretty much almost done, I'm gonna start heating up my skillet and that's going to be for my dumplings. So probably the best thing want, for you to do. Um, did you want your nonstick or stick skillet? For the, for the dumplings, I, I, you know, it's really best to have a nonstick skillet um, because then they they just have less tendency to stick. But you take you know you'll you'll use what you use.
I guess the gnocchi shouldn't taste flowery. Well, see, that's the key. That's why you want to only put in as much as you um, need to, basically. Right. And that's where you start learning with gnocchi the feel of the gnocchi while you're making the dough. And until you um, kind of get that down, you might have, um, you, you, you know, you might have additional problems with it. But definitely once the gnocchi is floating, and it is for me, I'm going to remove it because if you cook it too long, it can melt <laughs> into, the, into the water. Right. And then this way is another way, you know, if you're having guests, your gnocchi is all done. And then we're just going to heat it up in the brown butter sauce at the end. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so we're coming to the end. I'm looking, people are looking at me. So that means I am gonna complete now the, um, the, um, the, the, the um, dumplings. And I'm gonna use some oil, um, you know, high heat oil. I've got avocado here. You might use just, you know, the vegetable oil and put that on the bottom of the pan. It's a heated pan. And then I'm gonna take out my dumplings from the refrigerator. And I'm just going to place them onto that pan. What's the heat? Medium? I'd say medium high, but not too high. You want these to sizzle. And this is where you're going to get that crispy bottom before we add the sauce. How much oil you, again? Is it actually like uh, filled with oil or just a little? You know, I actually, if you can see if we've got the uh, um, stove shot, I feel like I've got a little too much oil in here um, for, um, you can see it kind of rolling around. So I would say put in about a tablespoon, Laura. you know, depend, hold on, depending on how much you're cooking, um, you don't want so much oil that it's going to interfere with the sauce. Laura, so the I would say, the stove camera I'm sorry, went out. the stove camera went out. The stove camera went out probably because it. it's hot. Oh, probably because it's hot. So let me see if I can cool that baby down. While you're doing that, where are we to put the gnocchi when it's done boiling? Um, put it off onto a plate or a, um, a cutting board. I've got mine just sitting here. I've got the camera now back on a cutting board. So, and. Um Laura, sorry, I missed something. The brown butter sauce, do I just make, put butter in a pan? You know, you put butter in a pan. We haven't done the brown butter sauce yet because we're kind of, we're doing, you know, there's, we've got a lot of the brown butter sauce. We'll just finish right at the end. Okay, good. Um, let's, let's focus on the, the, the um, I'm dumplings. On time. I'm on time. So if you pick up a dumpling, you don't have to do it, but you'll see it has a, if you look at mine, it has a little bit of a crust, which is what we're going for. And so I just want to saute them up for about, you know, I'd say about a minute. It's been about a minute. Um, I'm going to reduce that heat. And I'm going to take my sauce that we made, the coconut and red pepper sauce. And I'm not going to add it all in because I only have five dumplings in here. And oh. um, so I'm going to add in. So you, if everyone wants to look up, I've got my dumplings in a plain pan. I've got my coconut sauce. I'm just gonna throw on some right onto it. Oh. Now I'm moving the pan away from the camera because I don't want to lose the camera again. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna let it steam for a couple minutes, like three minutes, four minutes. You'll see the change of, um, uh, to the shrimp and of course then we want the um the dough to be um cooked through um soft and you turned it to low turn, you can turn it you can definitely turn it down okay you still want some you know some cooking to happen and you want the shrimp to cook we're killing it, people. 
killing it. You guys are killing it. You guys are killing it. If anybody has a little bit of um, a butter they can put in a pan, just turn that butter on low and let it start to melt. But keep it low. I'm gonna look at my dumplings. And what I do is I kind of just touch, I touch the skin to see if the, you know, the, if it's soft. And then I look to see if the shrimp has turned into a little bit of a pink color. And it takes about, I'd say four, you know, four minutes, five minutes, depends on how hot your, your thing is. And then for my butter sauce, when you're heating, when you're making a brown butter sauce, it goes from basically kind of spurting the, the butter sauce while it removes the water into um, once it stops spurting, then you have to start watching it because um, the milk fats will brown and you don't want um, them to get black. And in the back, well, no, I think we're just going to do it. You can either reheat, you know, we, we could put a, a brown, um, in fact, I might do it, why not? Um, I'm going to put a little oil in a pan and I'm going to, I wish it was a nonstick pan, but I don't have another small nonstick pan. I'm going to try to give my gnocchi a little bit of color. It's not necessary. You can just put it right into the sauce. But if you want to make it look prettier, you give it a little color and you do that just by sauteing it. And a, a, a nonstick pan is the best for that. So we got a I, uh, just back step for a second. So our no. dumplings are in the pan. They're nice and golden. And then you said we're adding the roasted red pepper sauce to the pan. Yeah. So um, give me the stove shot, Ray. And you'll see with mine. Got it. And the, the shrimp firms up. And so by, by touching it, you can see that the shrimp is done. You can feel that the, um, the wonton skin is soft and that the inside is firm. So mine are done. Okay. And I'm gonna transfer, actually I'll leave them here on the pan just because you guys can see it. How are you doing, Amber? Yeah, the gnocchi, I was gonna put a little brown, brown color on it, but it's not gonna be effective without a nonstick skillet because um, it sticks to the bottom. So we're just gonna transfer it to the brown butter sauce. And if you look at the stove now, let me see if I can give you a better shot of the whole stove. Yeah. We've got a couple things going on. We've got the brown butter sauce right below me here that's turning brown. Um, in the back there is the, um, the dumplings that are done. And then I tried to put in the far back there, the gnocchi to brown it up, but it's not a nonstick skillet. So they're gonna stick. And so I'm just gonna so turn that off. Question for the gnocchi, if it's coming out of the boiling water a little bit mushy looking compared to what you have there, what would the remedy be? The remedy is more uh, flour. And that's where you're gonna learn if it, if it kind of just all didn't really hold together, you wanna mix in a little bit more flour to those pieces that you, um, that you uh, haven't completed yet. So basically, um, we're letting few people catch up. Uh, we're going to finish up. I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit. My dumplings are done and they're just sitting in the pan now so that you can see them in case you want to see. I've got my butter that is browning and basically to make a brown butter sauce, it's very easy. You just melt butter in the pan. The trick with the brown butter sauce is you don't want to get it so cooked that the brown bits turn black. Then you, um, you've got a problem. I also finished my, uh, my, my sauce, my cashew sauce. And uh, for that, I just put everything in the Cuisinart. Make sure you give it a taste. And um, you can add more water to it if you want to have it be more saucy or you can serve it more as a kind of a side 
a thicking thing, a, th a thicker, thicker paste. That's what I'm going to do there. And then when I when I see those brown bits that are not black yet, I'm going to throw my gnocchi into my brown butter, and then reheat it like that. Are you doing the brown butter for the uh, cilantro sauce as well, or that's kind of separate? Oh, uh, the well. See, we have two sauces. We were very ambitious to have two sauces because we had one vegetarian, um, and so it, the, the cashew sauce is a nice little addition to um, to that. But you know, they're separate sauces. But I think just like wondering what we do with the cashew sauce. Um, in the meantime, does this go in like a bowl? Does it need to be mixed with the gnocchi at any point or we're just kind of chilling there for now? Yeah, I'm leaving it, I'm leaving it in a little bowl on the side bowl. as a thicker, as a kind of a thicker uh, um, a, a ability. If you wanna thin it out, you can add some water or more vinegar or more oil you choose. <laughs> My sauce I'm gonna... does not look like yours, but that's okay. Ah, well, you know, that's all right. <laughs> I'm going to actually transfer my gnocchi now, and we'll take the uh, overhead shot, Ray. I've got I've got butter with brown flecks, not black. If it's black, it's too done, too overdone. And I'm going to pour a little bit of that butter on top of it, and then I'm going to top it with some capers and almonds. Now, if we had more time and or you were um, interested and in, you can fry the capers in just some oil and they become crispy and that's really a nice. Oh, I was, all, I was also gonna put a little spinach in the, um, saute the spinach, um, add a little spinach into the brown butter, but we didn't, I didn't do that. But definitely that's a nice thing. I used to put spinach in the gnocchi, but it's so much easier just to saute spinach up with the gnocchi and then you don't have to worry and it's easier. So how do you put, you put, uh... Just regular capers on top? Yeah, I'm putting the capers either in the sauce directly or you can you can put them on top, but it's better to put them in the sauce. I think, you know, put them in the. Right, okay. Put them in, um, in the brown butter and then spoon everything on top of your gnocchi and add a little bit of Again, the spinach would make it. Here, I'm just putting a little bit of garnish with some basil leaf. And then I'm gonna transfer my... This uh, cilantro sauce is like a... Oh yeah, it's really good. And um, it's good for anything. You know, the more whole grains that we eat, we want these types of sauces that um, can be used to, you know, use it for anything. You can use it as a salad dressing even. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. So yeah, ooh, that looks pretty. And then I'm gonna be the yoga instructor in your background and just say, I, I have these things called dang coconut chips. Um, I don't know if you sell them up in Canada, but they're just basically seasoned coconut strips. They're kind of like chips made from coconut. And they make such a nice addition, a nice garnish to something like our dumplings. So I'm gonna garnish our dumpling with a few of these crispy chips and maybe a little bit of extra cilantro to our dumplings. Okay. And I'm gonna hang with you. Um, if I know Ray's in the background and if he wants to take off you can take off my dear um but if you want to stay you're more than welcome to stay but i'm going to stay a little longer while people catch up so you thank you what ray. I said? thanks ray yeah i mean you're more than welcome to stick around but we don't have to switch between cameras anymore if you uh or stick around i'm not kicking you out <laughs> you're <laughs> you are you're here okay welcome, ray. Yeah, I don't I don't want to keep you any longer if you had something else to do, but if you're if you're fine, you're we're fine. Send, a, send a picture <laughs> at some point. It'll be fun. I'm gonna hang out and keep cooking a bit, but yeah, no, I'm not leaving yet. I'm gonna stick around too. Um, but I was just saying if Ray had something, he was here at 2 30, but if he wants to stick around, he can stick around. 
Ooh, somebody's taking us. Somebody's plating. Okay, yeah, question. Actually, I was doing my cashew try. sauce. My gnocchis yep. have been sitting on this plate. Uh, what should I be doing with my gnocchis here? Have you made your brown butter sauce or your cashew sauce? I've made my cashew sauce, yeah. Okay, so you can do a couple things. You can mix, um, take a little olive oil. Put, you can put, I, what I would do, yeah. definitely, especially if you're not doing the brown butter sauce, yeah. is get yourself a nonstick skillet. Because I tried to heat them up in a stick skillet and I've done this before and it never works, right? Where, where, yeah. You know, it gets stuck. So um, if, so a nonstick skillet with a little oil will allow, if, as long as, you know, you've got a gnocchi, they'll stay together. It will allow you to brown your gnocchi and then you can plate it or you could actually toss it in with the cashew sauce. So mm. I'm going to take some of the cashew sauce now, and I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to make it a little bit more of this, a little bit more liquidy. As soon as I take my picture, I've I've been move I've moved the camera. Now you you get now you can see me taking picture. I don't see this camera. Is this camera still on, Ray? Do you have yeah, the overhead? See you. No. Can you see the overhead show? Did I lose the overhead show? Maybe because I went into camera, I'd probably cut out a Zoom. I've never done this. I've never taken live photos while the class is going on. So let me see. Did it bump me out of Zoom? Oh, no. Let's see. Is it back? Oh, it is. Okay. So the camera went off. So that's fine. But now it's back on. Okay. So I'll show you. I'll show you mine for anybody. I know you guys, these are my dumplings. And this is my gnocchi. Nice. Okay, so now I'm going to take that cashew sauce. I'm going to. Right. I'm going to thin it up a little bit, maybe with some wine. Quite honestly, where's yes. that wine? Hey, is it happy hour? Yes. What time is it? Is it it's happy, been hour? happy hour? Happy oh, hour. Know... Randy, look at you. Look at that. Wow. Hey, Randy, that is amazing. Wow, look at that. Well done. Uh, the dumplings are interesting because I, I mean, think I made them too big. So oh, yeah, know, if the they sauce, if the sauce kind of evaporated. Yeah. So um, you know, I, you know, I and you can always add more coconut. I mean, basically the sauce congeals, and you've got basically coconut milk that's seasoned. And so you can always just add a little bit. If you need more liquid, just mm -hmm. pour a little bit extra of the coconut milk in your pan. Right. Right. Um, or a little bit more um, juice, um, a little bit more wine. Any of that right. would work. Yeah. Now I'm trying to. They look thin. really yummy, though. I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Who are we? We're chefs. Let's open up you a guys. <laughs> okay. These are pushing a little too far there, Randy, opening up a restaurant. Mine's going to be great if you close your eyes and you don't look at it and just taste it. Yes, John. You know what? So I mean, do restaurants like... that are all about flavor. Like, who cares about if it's fancy? And this that is so good. good. So good. When do we eat? Anytime you want. I've, I actually thinned out my, uh, my cashew sauce and I'm going to toss some of the gnocchis in it now. Of course, if they were hot, they'd be best, but I'm just going to see how that goes just tossing it in. Mm, delicious. Don't forget to take some pictures, Randy. I've been documenting the whole process. I took pictures of my final product. Okay, got me too. My kids liked it. Thanks, Laura. Oh, hey. Okay. So I think everybody is leaving. And um, as I'm oh, doing, I'm doing, we're not leaving yet. So I tossed my gnocchis in with my, and anytime anyone wants to leave, you go ahead. I tossed my gnocchis in with Thanks, the Sarah. thinner version. But I think maybe the best thing is just to put the sauce on the bottom and then the gnocchis on top of the cashew sauce if you thin it out enough because then you still have the pretty gnocchis and people will mix it in on their own. So yeah. what I'm saying is, 
I think the sauce on the bottom of the reheated gnocchis is probably your best bet because I think it would look prettier. Honestly. Capers, oh, and you know what? Capers with the brown butter sauce and the gnocchi, delicious. And hey, for the for the vegans out there, um, the nice thing about the gnocchi, another thing is Parmesan cheese. And down here, you can actually get dairy-free Parmesan cheese now. Oh, wow. So you can get dairy-free almost anything now. So a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese onto your gnocchis or some freshly grated uh, Pecorino Romano. Um, all of those options are going to be um, a nice addition too. So. I am now every. <laughs> All right, you guys, maybe, uh, did we, do we all show what we, uh, do we all show our wares? Yes, I'm taking some pictures. Still going on these here, but here are my dumpling. Oh, good. Yeah, no, everybody, I'm, I got, this is it for me today, so I'm happy to stick around. <laughs> I want to see Brad. give you a little show and tell here. Oh, let's see. Oh, beautiful. Oh, very nice. Not oh, bad. gorgeous. With a little bit of cilantro oh. as the garnish on the dumplings. And then I put a little couple parsley, or sorry, basil leaves on the top of the gnocchi. Just as a little final green touch. Excellent. That's great. Yes, take, take pictures of your wares. I'm gonna take another picture. Yeah, so if you remember, I burnt my cashews, so my sauce is like dark brown. That's the only reason why it's so different. It's just a burnt cashew sauce, which is just delicious. Well, yeah, you know, and, and everybody has a different um, reaction to um, burn. So, you know, somebody's burnt is somebody's, like my mother used to love burnt bacon, for instance. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course, I don't, I'm not a bacon eater myself, but um, anyway, so yeah, you have to find, you find your own, whatever your own. Um. So Laura, I have turmeric and serrano peppers. Should I be using those for anything? Um, the turmeric went into the coconut sauce, which gives it a nice, um, you know, dump for the dumplings, gives it a nice color. Um, it's really more for a color thing. And I, you know, um, turmeric, of course, has um, wonderful anti-inflammatory and other um, uh, analgesic properties, um, but we're not using very much of it in this recipe to, to um, take benefit of that. But of course, we're using it for the color. If you leave it out, no big deal. Uh, the serrano pepper went into the cashew sauce, and the cashew sauce again was the vegan op, op, you know, op, option to the brown butter sauce, which is just so simple and easy. Um, and uh, it, um, serrano peppers, of course, are also an option. You don't have to add them if you don't like heat. And while we're asking that, what is the hottest part of the pepper? Seeds. And it's not the seeds. The hottest part of the pepper is the vein. It's the white part that holds the seeds to the pepper. Mm. So um, that, that is a good trivial pursuit question. Honestly, these dumplings are delicious. So good. Aren't they good? They're really fat. They're, people love them. And of course, with the tofu, it's a little different kind of thing than the shrimp, but the both work well. Um, but I, yeah, but I feel I, like with, with the green onion and then like the whatever, like oyster sauce, you can get vegan oyster sauce. It's like super umami. It's delicious. Absolutely. Umami, very important, especially when we reduce the amount of animal products and heighten the amount of plant products. Now I've got some gnocchi um, I made, I don't know, a while ago. <laughs> I left it in my freezer, but I froze it on something flat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick this frozen gnocchi up. I'm gonna put it in a plastic bag. And then when I'm ready to use it, I'll just dump it in the, the boiling water. So that's how, you know, if you, once you make the rest of your gnocchi, 
Mm -hmm. If you have too much, freeze it on a flat plate or cutting board and then just pop it in a bag and then it'll freeze and you'll be able to um, serve it, you know, have it for later. So question, how have you served these dumplings in the past? I got to is it a dinner party thing or is it like more like a, like how, what's the best way to serve it? Well, the dumplings, you know, certainly they could be, I, I usually serve them as a tapa. So a small plate, two dumplings like I have here. Um, you can, again, you can freeze Sorry. the dumplings beforehand, mm -hmm. but then the thing about the dumplings is they're, they're, they're basically cooked to order. Um, and so, um, but because that they, so that's one thing you'll have to, you know, cook them to order. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can cook a bunch of them. If you've got a big nonstick skillet, you can cook 20 of them at the same time mm -hmm. and they'll hold in the skillet until you serve them up to the crowd. The thing about the dumplings is, is they need a fork because you've got the sauce right. and the juice. And so you can't really serve them as finger food. So that's where you go to Craig and Barrel and you get these little cute plates and, and you serve, and people I'll tell you, you, serve somebody a plate of this and they just fall over. I mean, they're just gonna think that you're like the that's best great, there is. Great appetizer. It's a fantastic app. I've been, I've been using that in catering. I'm serious. I mean, I'm moving on my, how many years have I been in the business now? 35 years. Yeah. Something. Is it that much? 20, the, 30, that's 30. The thing that makes it so 30 years is the cumin. The cumin combined with the coconut milk. It's just like amazing. See? So, sounds so, tastes so good. And you know, the best thing, and we didn't have the time today, but cumin is so easy to take the seeds and you give them a little, toast them in a skillet for a minute or so. And then here. get yourself a coffee grinder that you don't okay. use for anything else but spices mm. and whirl that cumin seed up into the coffee grinder. And yeah. just keep it, you'll notice mine is um, definitely, so, yeah. and it's like, if you can use fresh cumin, freshly ground toasted cumin, the flavor is even better. But today, you know, we had, I, I mean, really congratulations to all you guys. I wasn't sure how we were going to do. There's a lot of moving parts on this class. And it seemed like everybody just, you know, and did a great job of it. So, um, yeah, you've got the handouts. My contact information is on there. If you need anything from me, feel free to send an email. Uh, what a pleasure. And, so awesome. Uh, so awesome. Yeah, so. Really enjoyable. Thank so you. here's to you. And you guys are doing such good work. Yay. Aquatic informatics. <laughs> wow the future Thanks, of the everybody. world has to do with water i mean so thank you for your work your professional work um i was just traveling in morocco and you know i live in california and we think california doesn't have any water and oh my god morocco has no water I know, I know, right so water's it, water number one resource and not everyone has the privilege like us in canada and united states to have it so accessible so and yeah, water you and guys food are have a so lot. connected, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, so important work you're doing. Well, everybody, I think we're going to sign off. Um, again, if you have any questions, just send me an email, and it's really been a pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for the fun. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Thank Jeff, you, Laura. Thanks, Chef Laura. Bye, you guys. Have Take care. Bye. Bye. Good night. Take a, let's see. Take a picture like that. <laughs>